freedom of expression, how to ensure freedom of expression, and uh, the protection of the journalists, um, how these uh, opinions can then uh, go out and be exchanged, to the development of the media, and nowadays we see media have a very much different forms than what they had uh, some 70 years ago, uh, with the advent of internet and social media and technology, etc. And then it's about how to use this technology also for spreading uh, the other tools, which means culture, of course, but also education. Um, so this is the environment on which, uh, in which I, I, I work, and, uh, and uh, in particular, I'm coming from the computer science, <coughs> science background, and I um, and I work mainly on, uh, on on software. Before, as software maker and producer, <laughs> and, and uh, now uh, let maybe. Um, less as a producer, but trying to uh, make the others to take this part of being able to produce and get this uh, understanding and perspective of uh, technology as something which is uh, a, a, like a pen by which you draw, you craft something nowadays in this uh, world which is made, everything is made of technology uh, in itself, but uh, the digital technologies nowadays is the is the pen which is not cannot miss in our hands. So our work in uh, UNESCO as in all the United Nations is uh, driven by uh, what we what is called the Sustainable Development Goals, which are um, targets uh, and uh, you know very large targets uh, set by the international community because we need a direction. We need a direction where to go. Um, we need to um, tell and face the objectives and the and the uh, you know yeah, the, the goals that we have to uh, uh, attain. So the international community being very uh, you know um, they, they try to set uh, these uh, uh, you know, harsh sort of uh, targets. Uh, these are these are targets which are said to be attained by 2030, so very, very short time, actually, because we are only 10 years away from that. But it's, uh, uh, if we attain this or not, it's still useful to communicate and discuss. And the join now, down because discussion is important. So how to discuss about these things is to list them down in a, in a sort of uh, scheme and th th this is a bit uh, also I believe the um, a good thing about the development goals which are setting things in much more uh, detailed way in respect to the previous goals that the international community has set uh, which were the, called the millennium development goals name which was uh, of course uh, uh, <laughs> very ambitious and here you see uh, targets like poverty, anger, education, and these are the, the, this is the framework that uh, we are called to work in as, a, as an international agency, but also uh, you know, as a community. So, of course, here we're talking about uh, goal number four, which is quality education, but in doing that, uh, uh, in talking about technology, we, of course, touch upon uh, many other goals. Uh, including uh, decent uh, jobs and economic growth, in, including uh, innovation, including reducing inequalities, and uh, and we'll see. I hope uh, during my, my presentation also about uh, the uh, partnerships for the goals, because without partnerships, uh, these uh, international goals objectives cannot be attained. So that's very fundamental. It's important. <coughs> so. In, a, in, a, in the spectrum of the work that uh, we do, uh, try to narrow down a little bit the scope. So um, we work uh, on uh, you know, uh, specific uh, uh, subjects. And the specific subjects talk about uh, 
some freedoms and uh, these freedoms are translated from technologies to other things. So you, I guess you know about free and open source software. Uh, maybe you know about open educational resources, which is a big the translation of, I mean, the, the, the trans, translation <laughs> of uh, the uh, free and open source software concepts to educational resources. And then you have, uh, we have the, the developed uh, something which is called the ICT competency for framework for teachers, which is, uh, I'll come back to that. And also we work on open access to scientific information. Um, again, for fostering uh, dialogue and uh, access to information, which is the over overarching uh, objective of the work we do. So, the, uh, the work that I'm going to describe is uh, taking uh, basis from this, uh, this, this part, mainly from free and open source software because I'm, I'm from that side, but uh, also because we are in a world which is uh, quite young and, uh, and uh, the next billion we say, it's more, it's more than that probably, uh, internet connections will come from young people from the developing countries. So, if we think about that, we should uh, then think about, okay, what is the connection between that and the, the fact that technology is developing so rapidly? We know, we talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, robotics, uh, autonomous machines, etc. And we can go for <coughs> on for uh, biotechnologies, etc., etc. But what is what is the relation with uh, the young people that are going to uh, develop in this kind of world? So how they are going to develop actually? So will they know how this technology works? Because that, that's the main point. If you turn on the TV, do you know what's behind the screen? How does this image come to, you, to, your, to your eyes? This is an example from an old man like me. But <laughs> nowadays, if you have a, a mobile phone, how do you get all this information there? How do you get your game working? How do you play with people around the world using uh, you know, Fortnite? I don't know if you know <laughs> these kind of games, etc. So that, that's, the, that's the, main, the main thing. The world is virtual, and even education is becoming virtual. And uh, do we know what, how this is possible and how this is working? So one of the questions was for the young people, okay, if you use uh, Snapchat or whatever you use, is that enough for you to say, I do understand how these things work because I know how to share something there, because my photos go to my friends, because I know how to click like and I have a lot of followers or whatever name they have in uh, this is different, different media. So maybe, no, maybe not, this is a uh, season, that's uh, uh, not, not, in, not in agreement. So yes, yeah, so this is not enough. So if we go this way, how do I explain to people what does it mean to have uh, a software which is free. <coughs> so we talk about freedom, and uh, and free is a very misleading word in English. So how do I explain this to, to the people? How do we make how do they make the difference if they can get whatever they want from any downloading site, basically? Because uh, what is the difference between a, a movie? You, that you don't know that the movie that you buy. Or why are you buying a movie? Or uh, what, where, where is the price between, be, behind the, free, the freedom of the free software? Who is paying for that? <coughs> someone, someone is paying at the end of the day because someone has to leave. We go back to the goal of a uh, decent uh, job and uh, the price of innovation. So how to explain how, what is uh, uh, open data? It's 
speak a lot about open data in our cities. Our cities can become sustainable, for example. It's one one of the many examples. Uh, how do you explain open data to someone that does not know that uh, there are different levels of openness in open data and uh, getting a PDF of, uh, of a table of, uh, of data is not it's not really having open data, it's just a, a modern version of a copy, of a photocopy of, of these data, but uh, it, it, this is, it, it, the data are not really usable, reusable, and so you're not going to do much about it. I put here a, a quote from Tim Berners-Lee, we can't just use the web, we have to worry about what is the underlying infrastructure of the whole thing. Because there are surface and this is already hard to understand but it is also how this is maintained and how this is working so that's that's a, all uh, all questions that are you know maybe we're not going to answer all the questions but uh, so um, how do how does the internet work so all these questions are uh, are there, and uh, there are, we can have much much uh, much more, of course. And uh, some time ago, we said, uh, how do we go about it, and uh, how do we try to to explain these things? And uh, in UNESCO, we have a program which is called Media and Information Literacy, which is uh, taking it from the side of uh, media more than uh, the side of technology. It's more about how do we read a, a media, how to read information, and how you make it. A, a, you know, um, a, a, your opinion, how to uh, understand uh, what is written there and how, how to uh, translate this into knowledge, basically. But in terms of technology, we didn't know how to go about it. So we, we, we tried to uh, develop a program which was uh, uh, making this, this link. So how do we get how do we convince people, and when I say people, is uh, our main target actually is yes, more uh, decision makers and governments, of course, rather than uh, people, but how do we cross this link, and how do we touch the young people on the one side, and how to open the door to make it possible for them to cross this, uh, this, uh, this river, let's say. So, uh, we try to, uh, Look around uh, what were the what were uh, the initiatives that were already existing for enabling young people to build uh, applications. Because it was a rising of mobile phones. It was uh, five six years ago, and uh, and try to uh, sustain this uh, this uh, this kind of uh, initiative that would. Uh, uh, explain to anybody that uh, what you have in your mobile phone, which is the, the computer of today, at least for the moment, <laughs> uh, that uh, what you find in the mobile phone is not given by some uh, superior entity, but it's made by people. So if you have, uh, if you're looking for a game which does something, adventure, etc., if you don't find really the game that you like, you're obliged to, do, to play the game that you find, it's not that given. I mean, you may, in fact, develop your own game. If you have a problem because you cannot read the, open, the data which are openly published by your city because you want to provide a service that is uh, important to you and your neighbors, you can actually develop your app if the data are properly uh, exposed by the authority. So that that's was a bit the idea, and uh, the idea was to uh, support then uh, uh, existing initiatives, to support youth organizations and teacher training institutes uh, to, uh, to do this, to enter this game and uh, play the game, let's say, and then inspire decision makers so that uh, there is necessary resources would be put uh, there to, to function. 
okay, this is this a dream, but it's not uh, it's not completely functioning, of course. But uh, this is uh, uh, under, uh, the, the underlining, let's say, um, you know, uh, wish, <laughs> if you want. Uh, because the world is much more complex, of course, from this, and uh, when you want to scale up, so I really completely join your, your, your speech. I mean, when you want to scale this up, it's not, it's not easy, because you have to uh, think about a number of things which are not... Uh, education is complicated, and you know, uh, you know better than So, instead of taking it from a directly from the education side, because uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, also our um, uh, work in UNESCO, uh, we work also in education, and for many years we've been talking about ICTs in education, we took it from another angle. Why? Because uh, uh, ICTs in education for the last 40, 50 years is a promise that is not fully maintained. Nowadays there are, there are if, in fact, uh, uh, you know, some um, modern ways that uh, enables actually IC, through ICTs to reach more and more people, talking about MOOCs uh, or you know things like that. But uh, you know the system is so complicated that uh, unless you are building a totally brand new <laughs> education system where there was nothing before, uh, it's very complicated to to to, to make a change. So uh, it's not buying a computer that for, for many years was. The, the uh, main, let's say, uh, uh, action that were taken when they, when you wanted to build uh, ICTs in education, buying a computer is not enough, actually. And uh, most of the time, it's more provoking. The best, the best is situation is probably nothing. The worst situation is probably just dumping uh, hardware in some in some places. So we took it from a different perspective, and the uh, perspective was like to say, okay, how do we, uh, let's say, stimulate the imagination of the learners for problem solving? So of course this is how it is. It's more, much more. Since things have developed a lot, and uh, how do you? translate this into a practical solution and uh, how do you build something possibly around this as an entrepreneurship because you have a problem your problem is that uh, you want to make some money for giving for example and uh, you know you cannot afford going years maybe to school so it's also depending on the target group and the, and the, and the geographical zone that you are going to work in so here we're not talking about uh, uh, maybe very rich uh, countries, uh, but uh, more on the targets that uh, we had uh, at UNESCO at the time. And then how you expose this so that you may eventually get some investors. Because money is there, it's not a problem. Money has never been the problem, money is there. The problem is to get it. So, and that to get it, you have to convince that uh, whatever you're doing is going to make more money. And that's not very educational uh, speech, right? <laughs> that's, it's not uh, probably the the um, I don't know. Is this uh, the kind of thing that is really keeping us out of war and into peace? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it's something that is going to make us uh, live here. So we took this uh, and the inspiration of this kind of. Uh, the path was uh, given by a, a small uh, US-based uh, uh, um, uh, non-profit company um, called Technovation. Now it's uh, called Technovation Challenge, uh, they changed the name. We had a partnership with them, it was in 2015. Um, and this was a group of uh, like five ladies that uh, had this idea of how do we uh, bring more ladies into ICTs, and uh, to do that, we try to uh, push them to uh, study a little bit on uh, computer science, a little bit on on uh, entrepreneurship, and so on. 
and to come up with ideas that they eventually can pitch uh, in front of the companies. Now, the problem of this uh, is a great approach, I believe, but it's, the problem of this approach is that uh, there is very little um, training and uh, there is only one or few winners. What happens to the losers? So how do you sustain the momentum? Because that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, you learn something, you get all excited, you go there, you have a great idea, but you're, for X, Y, Z reasons, you don't get the money, so where do you go? So is this uh, uh, enough? No, but it's, it's a start. And we're using a very uh, simple tools uh, that uh, we also use a lot. Uh, you may have heard about App Inventor. Maybe, yeah, no. uh, which is uh, a, a, a software, a fantastic software made originally by Google. When Google uh, started to uh, build Android, <coughs> the operating system, so the problem is that they, were, they had no apps. So how do you get more apps? And good idea of Google, I believe, was to say, okay, let's uh, simplify the making of apps. And they started to produce a very, I mean, from, from um, existing uh, things, they, they adapted uh, what is called the block-based language to Android and uh, started to have this uh, sim simplified uh, apps making process, which was then taken uh, on by MIT, but actually it's still funded, I think, a lot by Google behind. So what is nice about these kind of languages is that uh, it's uh, simplifying the um, the um, I mean um, the complexity of uh, building an app, which is not easy. There are so many, so many things you have to think about, and uh, especially on Android, it's very much uh, techy, weird. There are lots of uh, XMA, a lot of uh, things like that. It's not easy. So. Um, but the complexity is, uh, is uh, simplified, but uh, the logic behind is not that simplified. So there are things that are easy, but actually other things that uh, you still have to think how to do it. So educationally, it's uh, very good. It's like the other one that uh, I'll probably mentioned later, it's uh, called Scratch, which uh, was, uh, well, was also presented <laughs> by uh, Mitch Resnick at one uh, IFIP, uh, IFIP conference a few years ago. So, yeah, what is interesting there is that you make this bridge between uh, the complexity of technology and uh, the fact that you are not, uh, not all of us are uh, computer engineers, to the fact that uh, actually you have an idea, you want to transform and translate this into, into a real app. And what is coming out from App Inventor are real apps. Of course, it, uh, it's a bit frustrating if you are a computer <laughs> Specialist, because actually things are sometimes more complicated than that. Because you want to do things, and uh, the tool doesn't allow you to to be free enough to do what you want. But uh, to to understand, it, give, it gives you the satisfaction of uh, of building something very quickly, and hopefully the satisfaction translates into the uh, wish willing of knowing more. I want to know more, so I go to another language. So, as I said, yeah, and this uh, translated with uh, I see a lot of, lot of translation. <laughs> this uh, transforms into, uh, let's say, uh, making projects. So here by year we uh, developed uh, a number of projects in very different places, uh, uh, and sometimes very also difficult places. So in, uh, since 2014, uh, we realized, uh, I don't know, at least <laughs> more than 115 projects in more than 50 countries. And uh, we had some more than 8,000 students. I'll come back to that. And we involved, most importantly, we involved more than 30 UNESCO field offices. What is UNESCO field office is the, is the branch of UNESCO in a given country. Not all the countries have UNESCO offices, but uh, what is uh, 
important for us operationally is to uh, have these offices involved because they, they are actually the one that are talking with the local people. So in, uh, in uh, India we have, we have the office in New Delhi, really, which is not enough for a big country like India. But, uh, um, so the idea is really to um, inspire. And uh, apart from the, uh, these numbers that may seem big or small, depends on where you are, uh, what is um, interesting is that it's really worldwide. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, we didn't go with the prepared uh, set of, of courses. So the approach was not to say, we UNESCO, we come to you and we give you this. Not at all. Why? Because we are not an university. Which I believe is not uh, realistic for us to go anywhere and say, I'm an educator, you are the student. Who are we? On the contrary, you may have a pro we offer a concept, you may have a, an, a, an issue, you may have a need, and so we, let's dialogue and find out what the need is. So this ended up in making projects which were very, 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 very different from the one from the other. For example, uh, put a few examples from uh, last uh, year, the year just finished. In Mozambique, uh, for example, we had a, a project which involved uh, 200 students from different uh, areas of Mozambique. Um, and uh, here, what was interesting was, first of all, the difficulty from the students to reach a, an equipped place. So the difficulty was to find an equipped school. Or more than that, uh, not the usual typical school, but to find a place where we could Let's say, let's say launch something which could be replicated. And then we had a chance to find a partner like this Manwana uh, uh, Park of Science and Technology because they, they have the facilities, because it's a place where you learn about science, because uh, uh, it was a place that uh, played play this, this role, this game. Game, but it's not a game in the sense. <laughs> but, uh, and with the, with the uh, support from the Ministry of Science and Technology, we were able to organize these uh, classes during the, during a few <coughs> several weeks, and uh, we involved uh, uh, also some sponsors like the uh, South Korea uh, Ministry of Education and uh, and uh, also Vodafone from the uh, private sector. So this ended up in. Uh, uh, okay, we've been training a, maybe a lucky few, but uh, the hope is that uh, this will uh, multiply and will continue. And we already re employed some of the students, if not all, the students for teaching other people. I'll, I'll come to back, back later to this. Um, so at the end of the day, we had the what? We had the, uh, 50 prototype of apps. Prototype is a very important word because making an app is not easy. So, of course, we can say to you, okay, let's make an app, but uh, at the end, even of, after a few months, you will not make an app because the app is not, not an easy job. But I'm not really looking for you to make an app. It would be not a promise that we can maintain, but uh, it, we would like to, you to get into the movement of making up. Finalizing an app is a question that I get a lot from our colleagues from the different field offices, etc. It's not easy. And there are only a few apps that really reach the top. And here we get to another thing about technology, which is that uh, um, visibility is, is not uh, is a big issue nowadays because you have big players and all the rest. So, 
Uh, another project that uh, I mentioned is uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. This is uh, another um, totally different project, which will, uh, this is the second phase. It was the second phase of a larger project of the Nigeria Federal Capital Administration um, in Abuja, and uh, this was funded publicly. So, so the, the uh, Federal Capital Administration is the public uh, government of the uh, of this uh, territory, and uh, through the Ministry of Information, uh, we were able to have a. Uh, different phases of uh, batches, let's say, of, uh, of students. And here, the, the goal was really for the, what the Nigerian wanted, is that these people should be employable. So you see, we're again in another, in different context. Um, so this was not possible with a few weeks course, of course, so we went on for a few months course. This uh, was uh, maybe eight, eight months, nine months kind of courses. So we are very different uh, thing. And the end of the day, you have to get really uh, real apps. Or you have to get people that uh, know how to make an app. So that's uh, uh, a totally different way of preparing the courses, a different way of, uh, of teaching the courses. So how do you, the, the challenge there was to find the right partner again, because as we are not a university, we cannot just go there and, and teach. <laughs> we are not uh, doing that. So to find a local uh, partner that would be able to sustain this kind of effort. And hopefully uh, there were elections in Nigeria, so let's say, Let's, let's see how it goes if there is with another, another larger phase. With the discussions were to have uh, thousands of people next, next time. In total, we had uh, more than 1,000 people in, the, in two years. Um, another example is uh, very different again. It's in Uzbekistan. Uh, we had a very different kind of thing, which is very popular, actually. It's a form of a contest. So here the idea is not that you really train people, but you want to challenge them against something. So uh, you want to create an opportunity for them to demonstrate that they are actually apt or good for making be employable. And at the same time, you want to sensitize them to some particular topics. So uh, we open up the, the um, the contest, uh, open to uh, 18 to 30 years old, uh, to stay within uh, more or less uh, the UN definition of, of youth. And, uh, and the, at the end of the day, we had more money price, not much money, uh, of course, but uh, it, it was uh, enough for them to, uh, to continue to develop, to hopefully finish the app they were trying to do. And this topic of finishing an app is very dear to me because it's, it's very complicated. So what we have done also last year, uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, one year ago, was in uh, Rwanda, um, also thanks to the funding from South Korea. Um, we brought together people from uh, well, six to eight countries or something. Uh, in Africa, and uh, we were able to, let's say, um, challenge them to cooperate. They were all uh, young people that uh, were uh, former students of these kind of projects. And they had some apps that were not able to finish themselves. And so we brought together people from different, in the same situation from different parts of the world with a professional. Uh, mentor, let's say, uh, and, uh, and challenge them to f conclude some of the apps. So were some apps were chosen and they worked together for a few days for concluding the app. And the apps were concluded. And what is uh, more, more interesting there in this example is uh, not really the app, but there is that uh, you form a community of people. These people are still, uh, still discussing among themselves. 
and it's more than one year now, and they're uh, having the same WhatsApp group, and they <laughs> continue to discuss because they know each other, they know that they have the same problem, they share the same problem, and they share the same passion, which is to do this. But without this kind of intervention, they would not be able to, to do that. Um, So, sorry, what is interesting also in the Uzbekistan, also for, uh, this was uh, also uh, um, supported by the Tashkent University of Information <coughs> Technologies, which uh, shows that, uh, of course, they want uh, their students also to appear as uh, able to, to get uh, employed. Um, another example I want to, to share is uh, uh, from uh, Cuba. Uh, it's very interesting, why? Because in Latin America uh, there were some uh, um, there are a number of initiatives actually in America, but uh, for some reasons we were not able to work that much in that region. So uh, finally we managed to uh, open, uh, now we have a project which is going on in Jama Jamaica right now. So it's not really Latin America, it's more the Central America, but we had in the past projects in, in uh, Brazil. Uh, Still, um, so in, in Cuba, um, the Ministry of Communication and uh, the local uh, club that's of, uh, of uh, computer com computing, uh, finally they, they, they decided to join forces with us and then we had uh, this uh, project which was at the same time uh, um, uh, training teachers first and then and then youth uh, after. And then we're, we had a very uh, huge gap of age, from very, very young to a little bit uh, older. Um, this went on in, the, in, in several, in several uh, phases, let's say. Apparently, the success was uh, good because they wanted to do the ready. <laughs> Uh, child, I mean, contacted us because they want to repeat it this in 2020, and that's uh, that's interesting because it's uh, um, it's it's in a country which is uh, you know complicated from some, in some in some uh, in some ways. What is funny is that they localized the youth mobile logo because uh, you can you cannot have a uh, English word from this kind of project, so they called it the uh, UN2 the APK Cuba <laughs> in their t shirts. Um, so, teachers, we didn't speak about teachers a lot. So, what about the teachers? So, teachers are uh, the most important piece, probably, which is missing what, from what I, I've been saying. from now because teachers are the people that are actually in contact with the, 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 the young, young people so um, I don't know if you heard about the, the competency framework for teacher ICT CFT before I, I think uh, yeah from IFIP uh, that side uh, yes I don't know if the others know about it so it is a tool uh, for uh, maybe mapping uh, the competencies that teachers have in different uh, uh, ways, in different uh, fields of ICTs. Uh, it gives you uh, different uh, things as a, as a result. One is the, that, first of all, you, you know, you may know where you are now in terms of development of ICT skills for your teachers. And second is that uh, you may also set then your targets where do you want to go for if you want to uh, do um, the training for, for your teachers in service or pre-service, etc. So it is uh, intended for uh, teacher training and uh, consists on uh, uh, six different aspects of the teacher's practice over different levels which now includes also uh, computer science um, and that's something that I think we have to 
I'd be happy to uh, also listen to the discussion uh, in this uh, conference, also something that could be developed with the IFI as well. The main, the main idea is that uh, uh, teachers that have the necessary uh, competencies to use ICTs in their practice and to guide the development of the students' ICTs competencies. So that's the way they do. When I say that it uh, now includes computer science, it's actually, this is a bit uh, the uh, idea of the, the framework, is, is that, uh, um, okay, wh whenever you put in this matrix that uh, you have to know, as a teacher, you have to know uh, about the uh, basics of programming, for example, or basics of, let's make it more complicated, basics of artificial <coughs> intelligence. Uh, what do you what do you mean? And uh, who is the teacher? So are we meaning that every teacher should know how to <coughs> make uh, how to code? Is it, uh, is it what we want? I don't know. Or is it that any teacher should know what machine learning is and how to teach it? It's not easy, right? So. I think clarity is not yet there. So there is a discussion going on right now at UNESCO in a group which is working on this uh, uh, framework, uh, as particularly about artificial intelligence and what does it, does it mean to have a, a literacy, of artificial intelligence literacy, let's say, <laughs> for understanding what it is and uh, how this uh, not only influences the way you teach, but more importantly in this case is how this influence the um, capacity of the, uh, the the development of the competencies of the of the of the student actually. So teaching artificial intelligence is uh, probably something which is uh, already a must. So when I look back to all everything I said right now, because I'm talking mainly about coding, let's say, or programming, as you, as you wish. There's a, there are different uh, terminology issues here, but <laughs> um, am I thinking, uh, talking about something which is already the past? Because is it today important to learn how to code when actually we are already overcome by artificial intelligence, and which is not at all the same kind of coding. It's not at all, at all the same kind of logic behind it. So, it's a bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we try to move fast and try to say, bring people into the digital age by telling, by teaching, or maybe by uh, directing them towards understanding how technology works, but in the meantime, technology has advanced. So we're already late? I don't know, that's a question. So, that, that's the point. Because, does it make a difference tomorrow? A few years ago I would say yes, but now, nowadays, I don't know. Does it make a difference tomorrow if I know how, how to make an algorithm? for my daily life because uh, I know that uh, my banking algorithm should work this way, I know that uh, this thing should work this way, I know that data should be this way, should be, I mean, at least I have an understanding and I make my own opinion on how, how these things should work, at least I know what happens when I push a button, but tomorrow, or today, I'm talking about the mic, and I calling for uh, some personal assistant to do something. What's behind? I don't know. And this machine is probably learning from, from what I, I'm, I'm saying right now. So, you see, it's, it's, more, it's more complicated and it's not going to be easier from my point of view. On the contrary, there are other kind of skills that we have to put in the education, ethics, the ethics of ICTs, the ethics 
of artificial intelligence, how me as an educator or as a school principal, as a minister, treat the data from my students and uh, how this is used, how this is forming the individuals of tomorrow or shaping the life of people of tomorrow, more, more, more precise. So, there are many open questions. But coming back to <laughs> the work that we do right now, is that uh, uh, just recently in uh, November, there was a UNESCO general conference, which is the conference of all member states of UNESCO, which makes some, uh, in a sense, historical uh, decision to adopt what is called the OER, Open Educational Resources Recommendation. Which means that it's for the first time there is an instrument which is actually uh, recognizing officially the value of open educational resources and has uh, and set some objectives for capacity building, for uh, uh, sustaining the development of uh, policies that uh, would uh, enable uh, OERs and uh, also uh, fostering the creation and, uh, and, uh, of OERs. So in one way to facilitate international cooperation and to facilitate the uh, creation of uh, educational material which is uh, shareable and reusable and open to all. So that's, that's, uh, this is one, one step. If, uh, if we have uh, 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 access to this kind of uh, content. Maybe things are less uh, cryptic because we have uh, a way to understand. It's like a free software. If you look what is inside, you may more likely understand what is, it is, what is about. So how do we involve more, more teachers in all this? Hoping that this will be will be enough at least for the next few years. Um, one attempt that we have done uh, uh, since uh, our, since uh, four or five years is uh, we joined forces with uh, SAP, the big uh, German company known known for uh, management software um, and many many other partners. Uh, to uh, work uh, particularly in Africa. Uh, this is uh, also a decision for uh, um, policies, uh, priorities. Uh, for, for example, UNESCO, we have a uh, priority Africa. And, uh, and the idea here was to do another way, another, another approach to how to bring coding to people. And the idea was not to have a very sophisticated coding, so not the eight, uh, nine months, but more to impact the most, the largest number possible of people. And the idea here is to trigger the interest by the decision maker, to say, okay, oh, there, is, there are so many people interested in this, even the families. Okay? To trigger the interest of the teachers that maybe do not have all this uh, uh, will or time to devote to learning new, new skills, or they don't maybe understand why they sh should change the way they have uh, that they, they can conduct the, their teaching. So, to facilitate the adoption of digital coding curriculum, for, to have a sustained impact on on young people. Well, how this is done mainly by uh, not, not all the time, but mainly by uh, this uh, Scratch, which is uh, this uh, block-based uh, tool. And the idea is, uh, of course, Scratch is interesting. It's interesting because it's uh, for many reasons, but also because it's very direct. You can do storytelling with it, so it's, you don't need to have a very sophisticated uh, uh, approach to UNESCO field offices. What is UNESCO field office? Is the is the branch of UNESCO in a given country. 
not all the countries have UNESCO offices, but uh, what is uh, important for us operationally is to uh, have these offices involved because they, they are actually the one that are talking with the local people. So in, uh, in uh, India, we have, we have the office in New Delhi, really, which is not enough for a big country like India. But, uh, um, so the idea is really to um, inspire. And uh, apart from the, uh, these numbers that may seem big or small, depends on where you are, uh, what is um, interesting is that it's really worldwide. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, we didn't go with the prepared uh, set of, of courses. So the approach was not to say, we UNESCO, we come to you and we give you this. Not at all. Why? Because we are not an university. So I believe it's not uh, realistic for us to go anywhere and say, I'm an educator, you are the student. Who are we? On the contrary, you may have a pro we offer a concept, you may have a, an, a, an, an issue, you may have a need, and so with less dialogue and find out what the need is. So this ended up in making projects which were very, 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 very different from the one from the other. For example, uh, I'll put a few examples from uh, last uh, year, the year just finished. In Mozambique, uh, for example, we had a, a project which involved uh, 200 students from different uh, areas of Mozambique. Um, and uh, here, what was interesting was, first of all, the difficulty from the students to reach a, an equipped place. So the difficulty was to find an equipped school for more than that, uh, not the usual typical school, but to find a place where we could, let's say, let's say launch something which could be replicated. And then we had a chance to find a partner like this Manwana uh, uh, Park of Science Technology, because they, they have the facilities, because it's a place where you learn about science, because uh, uh, it was a place that uh, play, played this, this role, this game, game, but it's not a game in the sense, <laughs> but, uh, and with the, with the uh, support from the Ministry of Science and Technology, we were able to organize these uh, classes during, uh, during a few, <coughs> several weeks, and uh, we involved uh, uh, also some sponsors, like the uh, South Korea, Ministry of Education and, uh, and uh, also Vodafone from the uh, private sector. So this ended up in uh, uh, okay, been training a, maybe a lucky few, but uh, the hope is that uh, this will uh, multiply and will continue. And we already re-employed some of the students, if not all, the students for teaching other people. I'll, I'll come to back, back later to this. Um, so at the end of the day we had the what? We had the, uh, say 50 prototype of apps. Prototype is a very important word because making an app is not easy. So of course we can say to you, okay, let's make an app, but uh, at the end even of after a few months, you will not make enough because the app, it's not, it's not an easy job. But I'm not really looking for you to make an app. It would be not a promise that we can maintain, but uh, it, we would like to, you to get into the m movement of making an app. Finalizing an app is a question that I get a lot from our colleagues from the different field offices, etc. It's not easy. And there are only a few apps that really reach the top. And here we get to another thing about technology, which is that uh, um, visibility is, is not uh, is a big issue nowadays because you have big players and all the rest. So,
So uh, another project that uh, I mentioned is uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. This is uh, another um, totally different project, which uh, this is the second phase, the second phase of a larger project of the Nigeria Federal Capital Administration um, in Abuja, and uh, this was funded publicly. So. So the, the uh, Federal Capital Administration is a public uh, government of, the, uh, of this uh, uh, territory. And uh, through the Ministry of Information, uh, we were able to have uh, different phases of uh, batches, let's say, of, uh, of students. And here, the, the goal was really for the, what the Nigerian wanted, is that these people should be employable. So you see, we're again, in another, in different context. Um, so this was not possible with a few weeks course, of course, so we went on for a few months course. This uh, was uh, maybe eight, eight months, nine months kind of courses. So we are very different uh, thing. And at the other day, you have to get really uh, real apps. Or you have to get people that uh, know how to make an app. So that's uh, uh, a totally different way of preparing the courses, a different way of, uh, of teaching the courses. So how do you, the, the challenge there was to find the right partner again, because as we are not a university, we cannot just go there and, and teach, <laughs> we are not uh, doing that. So to find a local uh, partner that would be able to sustain this kind of effort and hopefully uh, there were elections in Nigeria, so let's see, let's, let's see how it goes if there is really another, another larger phase with the discussions where we have uh, thousands of people next, next time. In total, we had uh, more than 1,000 people in, the, in two years. Uh, another example is uh, very different again, it's in Uzbekistan. Uh, we had uh, a very different kind of thing, which is very popular actually. It's a form of a contest. So here the idea is not that you will train people, but you want to challenge them against something. So uh, you want to create an opportunity for them to demonstrate that they are actually apt or good for being employable. And at the same time, you want to sensitize them to some particular topics. So uh, we open up the, the, um, the contest, uh, open to uh, 18 to 30 years old, uh, to stay within uh, more or less uh, the UN definition of, of youth. And, uh, and the, at the end of the day, we had more money price, not much money, uh, of course, but uh, it, it was uh, enough for them to uh, to continue to develop, to hopefully finish the app they were trying to do. And this topic of finishing an app is very dear to me because it's, it's very complicated. So what we have done also last year, uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, uh, one year ago, was in uh, Rwanda, um, also thanks to the funding from South Korea. Um, we brought together people from uh, well, six to eight countries or something uh, in Africa, and uh, we were able to, let's say, um, challenge them to cooperate. They were all uh, young people that uh, were uh, former students of these kind of projects, and they had some apps that were not able to finish themselves. And so we brought together people from different, in the same situation from different parts of the world with a professional uh, mentor, let's say, uh, and, uh, and challenged them to conclude some of the apps. So were, some apps were chosen and they worked together for a few days for concluding the app. And the apps were concluded. And what is uh, more, more interesting there in this example is uh, not really the app, but there is that uh, you form a community of people. These people are still, uh, still discussing among themselves. 
it's more than one year now, and they're uh, I'm in the same WhatsApp group and they <laughs> continue to discuss because they know each other, they know that they have the same problem, they share the same problem, and they share the same passion, which is to do this. But without this kind of intervention, they would not be able to, to do that. Um, So, sorry, what is interesting also in the Uzbekistan, also for, uh, this was uh, also uh, um, supported by the Tashkent University of Information <coughs> Technologies, which uh, shows that, uh, of course, they want uh, their students also to appear as uh, able to, to get uh, employed. Um, another example I wanted to share is uh, uh, from uh, Cuba. Uh, it's very interesting why, because in Latin America uh, there were some uh, um, there are a number of initiatives actually in Latin America, but uh, for some reasons we were not able to work that much in that region. So uh, finally we managed to uh, open, uh, now we have a project which is going on in Jama Jamaica right now. So it's not really Latin America, it's more the Central America, but we had in the past projects in, in uh, Brazil. Uh, Still, um, so in, in Cuba, um, the Ministry of Communication and uh, the local uh, club let's say, of, uh, of uh, computer, com computing, uh, finally they, they, they decided to join forces with us and then we had uh, this uh, project which was at the same time uh, um, uh, training teachers first and then and then uh, youth uh, after. And then we, are, we had a very uh, huge gap of age, from very, very young to a little bit uh, older. Um, this went on in, the, in, in several, in several uh, phases, let's say. Apparently, the success was uh, good because they wanted to do the ready <laughs> Uh, child, I mean, contacted us because they want to repeat it this in 2020, and that's uh, that's interesting because it's uh, um, it's it's in a country which is uh, you know complicated from some, in some in some uh, in some ways. What is funny is that they localized the youth mobile logo because uh, you can you cannot have a uh, English word from this kind of project, so they called it the uh, UN2 uh, APK Cuba <laughs> in their t shirts. Um, so, teachers, we didn't speak about teachers a lot. So, what about the teachers? So, teachers are uh, the most important piece, probably, which is missing what, from what I, I've been saying. From, Till now, because teachers are the people that are actually in contact with the, 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 the young, young people. So, um, I don't know if you heard about the, the competency framework for teacher ICT CFT before. I, I think, uh, yeah, from IFIP uh, that side. Uh, yes, I don't know if the others know about it. So. It is a tool uh, for uh, maybe mapping uh, the competencies that teachers have in different uh, uh, ways, in different uh, fields of ICTs. Uh, it gives you uh, different uh, things as a, as a result. One is the, that, first of all, you, you know, you may know where you are now in terms of development of ICT skills for your teachers. And second is that uh, you may also set then your targets of where do you want to go for if you want to uh, do uh, the training for, for your teachers in service or pre-service, etc. So it is uh, intended for uh, teacher training and uh, consists on uh, uh, six different aspects of the teacher's practice over different levels which now includes also uh, computer science. Um, and that's something that I think we have to 
should be happy to uh, also listen to the discussion uh, in this uh, conference, also something that could be developed with IFIP as well. And the, main, the main idea is that uh, uh, teachers that have the necessary uh, competencies to use ICTs in their practice and to guide the development of the students' ICTs competencies. So that's the way they do. When I say that it uh, now includes computer science, it's actually, this is a bit, uh, the uh, idea of the, the framework, is, is that, uh, um, okay, wh whenever you put in this matrix that uh, you have to know, as a teacher, you have to know uh, about the uh, basics of programming, for example, or basics of, let's make it more complicated, Basics of artificial intelligence. Uh, what do you what do you mean? And uh, who is the teacher? So are we meaning that every teacher should know how to make uh, how to code? Is it, uh, is it what we want? I don't know. Or is it that any teacher should know what machine learning is and how to teach it? It's not it, right? So. I think clarity is not yet there. So there is a discussion going on right now at UNESCO in a group which is working on this uh, uh, framework, uh, as particularly about artificial intelligence and what does it, does it mean to have a, a literacy, artificial intelligence literacy, let's say, <laughs> for understanding what it is and uh, how this uh, not only influences the way you teach, but more importantly in this case, is how this influence the um, capacity of the, uh, the the development of the competencies of the of the of the student actually. So teaching artificial intelligence is uh, probably something which is uh, already a must. So when I look back to all everything I said right now, because I'm talking mainly about coding, let's say, or programming, as you, as you wish. There's a, there are different uh, terminology issues here, but <laughs> um, I mind thinking, uh, talking about something which is already in the past. Because is it today important to learn how to code when Actually, we are already overcome by artificial intelligence, and which is not at all the same kind of coding. It's not at all, at all the same kind of logic behind it. So, it's a bit, uh, 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 we, we try to move fast and try to say, bring people into the digital age by telling, by teaching, or maybe by uh, directing them towards understanding how technology works, but in the meantime, the technology has advanced. So we're already late? I don't know, that's a question. So, that, that's the point. Because, does it make a difference tomorrow? A few years ago I would say yes, but now, nowadays, I don't know. Does it make a difference tomorrow if I know how, how to make an algorithm? for my daily life, because uh, I know that uh, my banking algorithm should work this way, I know that uh, this thing should work this way, I know that data should be this way, should be, I mean, at least I have an understanding and I make my own opinion on how, how these things should work, at least I know what happens when I push a button, but tomorrow, or today, I'm talking about uh, Mike, and I, calling for uh, some personal assistant to do something. What's behind? I don't know. And this machine is probably learning from, from what I, I'm, I'm saying right now. So, you see, it's, it's, more, it's more complicated than it's not going to be easier from my point of view. On the contrary, there are other kinds of skills that we have to put in the education, ethics, the ethics of ICTs, 
the ethics of artificial intelligence, how me as an educator or as a school principal, as a minister, treat the data from my students and uh, how this is used, how this is forming the individuals of tomorrow or shaping the life of people of tomorrow, more, more, more precise. So, there are many open questions. But coming back to <laughs> the work we do right now, is that uh, uh, just recently, in uh, November, there was a UNESCO General Conference, which is the conference of all member states of UNESCO, which makes some, uh, in a sense, historical uh, decision to adopt what is called the OER, Open Educational Resources Recommendation. Which means that for the first time there is an instrument which is actually uh, recognizing officially the value of open educational resources and has uh, and set some objectives for capacity building, for uh, uh, sustaining the development of uh, policies that uh, would uh, enable uh, OERs and uh, also uh, fostering the creation and, uh, and, uh, of OERs. So in one way to facilitate international cooperation and to facilitate the uh, creation of uh, educational material which is uh, shareable and reusable and open to all. So that's, that's, uh, that's this one, one step. If, uh, if we have uh, 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 access to this kind of uh, content, maybe things are less uh, cryptic because we have uh, a way to understand. It's like a free software. If you look what is inside, you may more likely understand what is, it is, what is about. So how do we involve more, more teachers in all this? hoping that this will be, the, will be enough, at least for the next few years. Um, one attempt that we have done uh, uh, since, uh, our, since uh, four or five years is uh, we joined forces with uh, SAP, the big uh, German company known, known for uh, management software um, and many, many other partners. So to uh, work uh, particularly in Africa. Uh, this is uh, also a decision for uh, um, policies, uh, priorities. Uh, for, for, for example, UNESCO, we have a uh, priority Africa. And, uh, and the idea here was to do another way, another, another approach to how to bring coding to people. And the idea was not to have a very sophisticated coding, so not the eight, uh, nine months, but more to impact the most, the largest number possible of people. And the idea here is to trigger the interest by the decision maker, to say, okay, oh, there, is, there are so many people interested in this, even the families. Okay? To trigger the interest of the teachers that maybe do not have all this uh, uh, will or time to devote to learning new, new skills. Or they don't maybe understand why they sh should change the way they, have, uh, that they, they can conduct their, their teaching. So to facilitate the adoption of digital coding curriculum for, to have a sustained impact on, on the young people. Well, how this is done mainly by uh, not, not all the time, but mainly by uh, this uh, Scratch, which is uh, this uh, block-based uh, tool. And the idea is, uh, of course, Scratch is interesting. It's interesting because it's uh, for many reasons, but also because it's very direct. You can do storytelling with it, so it's, you don't need to have a very sophisticated uh, uh, approach.